Hey guys, welcome to episode four of Meaningful Manny's. March is Kidney Awareness Month, so that is the Manny I'm going to be doing today. If you are new to my channel, first of all, welcome. Um, Meaningful Manny's is a awareness series that I do here on YouTube that I do a matching Manny to go with whatever that illness or disease is that it is the awareness month for. Um, and honestly, my husband was the inspiration for this. I know it's, I'm sounding like a broken record. You guys have heard this so much, but I did my very first kind of meaningful Manny episode back in November when it was diabetes awareness month. Um, and that just, it kind of sparked it from there. When I did that video, I was not planning on doing a series. It literally came to me as I was doing the voiceover for that video because there were just so many people who had no idea that diabetes was as extensive as it was and the damage that it can do. And it just kind of made me think like, how many other illnesses and diseases are like that to where people don't think it's as big as it is. So that is how this all, it's how it all began. And I put so much time and energy and research into these. Like I should really post a picture in my Facebook group of the amount of notes that I do for all of these videos. I do not just Google search. Um, so far, a lot of these videos I've done, <laughs> my husband went through it. So I will actually reach out to his doctors and get their, you know, info because I always want to make sure that what I'm sharing with you guys is indeed true and factual. So yeah, I put a lot of time and research into all of these meaningful manis. These are definitely near and dear to my heart, but I did want to, before I get into the full kidney awareness part of the video, um, April is Autism Awareness Month, next month is, um, so I'm definitely going to be doing episode five for autism, but I want to share all of your guys' stories with all of these episodes. So if you guys have any autism story that you want to share with me, I will leave the email down below that you can send your story to. You can message it to me on Instagram or Facebook if that's easier for you. But I just always want to give you guys the opportunity to share your story so I can share it with everybody else. I'm actually going to create a playlist here soon. That way I can kind of keep all of these videos organized. And if you guys want to go back to one or if you're new here and you're watching this one and you want to go back and watch the other ones, you'll be able to find them a bit more easily than having to scroll through all of my videos. So I'm going to get into the kidney awareness. If my voice sounds weird or I'm sniffly, I am not sick. I live in Maryland where weather goes from 35 degrees yesterday to 67. And it is just, it's put my allergies in a little bit of, they're awake, put it that way. <laughs> so since I don't talk too much about the products that I use in this series of videos, um, I will as I always do, I will leave everything linked down below. So kidney awareness, the color is green. It is a darker shade of green than this. I'm going to use the actual awareness color in my nail art for the stamp that I'm going to do. But y'all know darker shades of green do not play well with my skin tone. So I did switch up the shade of green a bit. Um, but this month is also St. Patrick's Day. So when you guys are rocking your green manis this month and you share them on Instagram, just do a little hashtag kidney awareness month. Throw that in there for me if you don't mind. And just show your support and help spread some awareness for kidney disease and kidney failure. So today I am going to talk about chronic kidney disease, end-stage renal failure, which is end-stage kidney failure, and then a little bit about 
dialysis treatments because that is what I lived through and what I have the most experience with that I went through with my husband. So the whole purpose of your kidneys, I'm sure most of us already know this, but it filters out waste and extra fluid out of the blood, um, which is why if you know anybody with kidney disease or kidney failure, a lot of them are a bit heavier than before because since their kidneys don't work properly, they actually retain um, a lot of fluids. But early detection really is key because if it's caught early enough, they can put you on a special diet, kind of tell you how to pretty much just change your lifestyle as far as exercise and eating. So it is, it can be um, manageable to kind of keep it from progressing from kidney disease to full out kidney failure. Now, my husband was type 1 diabetic, so his situation was a little bit different. And diabetes is actually the number one cause of chronic kidney disease and failure. Number two is high blood pressure. And then there are autoimmune diseases like lupus and genetic diseases like polycystic kidney disease that can also cause people to go into chronic kidney failure or chronic kidney disease. There are five different stages of kidney failure. I know before my husband passed, he was in stage four. So he had reached four out of the five stages. So my husband was diagnosed with type one diabetes, I believe when he was around three years old. So he had it his whole entire life, pretty much. Um, and then in 98, he had his first transplant. He had kidney and pancreas. I'm going to try not to talk too much about the whole transplant thing because that is going to be my Meaningful Manny video for May. But since transplants are not guaranteed to last a lifetime, he was always considered to be a chronic kidney disease patient. So when I met him, he was already kind of still going through all of those doctor's appointments just to kind of keep an eye on it and manage it, um, that type of situation. And it was around eight or nine years into our marriage, he came back from one of his doctor's appointments after he had some blood work done and they said that his kidney function was starting to, you know, go down. So that transplanted kidney that he had was starting to, pretty much starting to fail. Um, and then I'd say about a year, year and a half after that was when he was told that he needed to start the whole process for getting back on the transplant list and talking to um, his doctors about starting on dialysis. And his actually progressed so fast that it didn't end up turning out the way that we wanted it to, to where, you know, he went and spoke to the doctor and then was able to set up the surgeries to start dialysis because it is a surgical procedure to be put on dialysis. Um, he was actually in the hospital and had to start that way, um, but he did hemodialysis. There's a couple different kinds of dialysis depending on your situation. Um, he was placed back on the kidney transplant list, but he did dialysis for, geez, it was almost like five years, I think. And he tried doing the dialysis in center for, uh, I want to say a couple of months. And it just, it wasn't for him. He wasn't comfortable with it. It didn't really go with his schedule because he was one of those one of those kinds where he just he could not stay home all the time so he wanted to be able to um, do his dialysis but be able to work for as long as possible so me and him kind of had a conversation and I quit my job so that I could go and do the dialysis training so that we could do his treatments here at home and that's how we did them for four years. 
and it was just so much more comfortable because he could sit on the sofa or take a nap, watch a movie. Um, but it definitely was a, it, it was hard. It was definitely, definitely hard because it took up a lot of time from start to finish. His dialysis treatments would take us anywhere from five hours if everything went, you know, perfectly fine. Um, sometimes it could take a bit longer if he had any issues or complications in the middle of the treatment. Like sometimes his blood pressure um, would drop really low really fast. So we would have to take care of that because, you know, a dialysis machine, it takes the place of your kidneys. A lot of people who are in the stage kidney failure that he was in, they don't produce any urine whatsoever. Um, so they don't go to the bathroom at all. So you can imagine all the, all the fluid that, you know, would build up if he went a couple days without a treatment. And then sometimes, um, he only had it in the hospital, which is what kind of put him in there, but you'll retain so much fluid that it will actually back up into your lungs and you'll have a hard time breathing. That's what happened to him in the hospital and he ended up having to oh what's it called so he did hemodialysis and he started with a emergency dialysis catheter that they had to actually put in his neck and it kind of goes straight down into his heart to filter his blood that way um, but once he had had a couple treatments and we were able to he went in and had the fistula procedure done which is done in well, I'm not sure if it's always done there, but for him, it was done in his upper arm. And what they do is they connect um, an artery to a vein so that the blood is constantly pushing against each other. And it, it was crazy because you could touch his arm and you could feel like the blood going at each other. It was, it was interesting to, to feel that and see that. So but for his dialysis, we would have to insert a needle. One would go in the vein and one would go in the artery. And one of the tubes would filter out the blood. It would run it through the machine, clean it. And then the other tube would put it back in. So if you weren't aware, that is how dialysis works. I wish I would have saved some of um, the pictures. I'll have to go back and see if I have any. But when he passed away, I, I really... I got rid of all the bad because I just, I couldn't look at it anymore. But there are 37 million American adults who have some form of kidney disease. Right now, I'm just showing you what's on my right hand. Another Triple D Manny with some transfer foils. Um, but yeah, um, so I just, I urge you, if you don't go, make sure you are going to your doctors regularly, stuff like this and other illnesses and diseases if they're caught in time they may not always be curable but sometimes they are manageable and you can keep them from getting so so much worse i definitely understand situations like my husband's to where it's it's kind of out of your hands you can you can manage it but it's only so long before that pre-existing disease that's causing another disease is just going to make it to where there's not much you can do for it. So if you have any kidney stories, I would love for you to share them in the comments. I love hearing all of your stories after I do these awareness videos. It just, I don't know, it makes me, makes me feel good about doing these videos and spreading some awareness and sometimes I get comments from you guys to where you're like oh my gosh I had no idea it could cause that or have that impact on somebody's body so if you take anything from this video just make sure you and your family are always going to your doctors regularly and just taking care of yourself because we all want you to be here as long as we can keep you so for my nail art, I wanted to do a little bit of marbling, so I'm going to use the eye gel, blooming gel, and then I have some white gel polish. I'm just going to do some squiggles. Um, if you've been with me for a while, then you know how I do my marble with the blooming gel, 
And then for my middle finger, I am just going to use that uber chic um, awareness plate. I will leave it linked down below. And I'm just gonna do some of the kidney awareness color with the ribbons. So I am going to shush up for a little bit. I'm gonna let you guys watch as I do my nail art and then I will be right back.
All right, so I have all of my designs done. I'm just gonna go ahead and top coat my nails. I'm only showing me doing the top coat just on the glitter nails. This glitter is stunning. It was the closest glitter I could find that I thought would go with this Manny, to be honest. You know, I'm not a big, greens just don't work on me, so I don't really have any green glitter dips. So I may need to work on that, but Lady Liberty is so pretty and it will kind of go with any color. So I'm gonna get these top coated. I'm gonna top coat the rest of them off camera. I'm going to cure them for 60 seconds. Um, cure time on gels will vary based on um, your nail lamp that you have, whether it's UV, LED, or what the wattage is. I have a 72 watt nail lamp, so mine cure pretty quickly. So I'm gonna get these cured and then I will be back to apply my cuticle oil and show you guys the finished Manny. So this is my final kidney awareness Manny. I'm gonna go in and apply my Candy Skincare cuticle oil and just get my cuticles all nice and rehydrated. But I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know if you like this video. Um, and don't forget, if you have a autism story you would like to share with me, email it to me or message it to me, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you're comfortable with. Or if you have any other ideas for a Meaningful Manny episode. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.